And we are live. Do you feel overwhelmed with trying to get a meal on the table when it's been one of those days? Well, in this live stream, I'm going to give you 10 tips that have proved useful for me in getting food on the table in a relatively short amount of time. And while we're at it, we can do a little Q&A. Homemakers, if we're just meeting, I'm Denise Jordan. HoneyBook is the one-stop shop, and I've been using that. I always forget to turn that iPad off. I turn it on so I can see what's, you know, like what's in the chat and all of that. But then I forget to turn it down. So when it pops on, there's always something on there. So sorry about that. Okay, so I was getting ready to introduce myself. So now let me do that. So homemakers, if you are new to my channel, I'm Denise Jordan, and I teach traditional homemaking for today's homemaker. And if that sounds like something that you're interested in, then hit that subscribe button and tap that little bell icon so that you don't miss any upcoming content. Okay, let's jump into it. Now, let me just share with you guys. Oh, wait. This is a big no-no, but I forgot the sponsor thing that I was going to talk about. I'm going to get it real quick. I can't believe this. Oh my goodness, I cannot believe this. Ooh, 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 ooh. You guys know there is always something going on around here. Uh, here I am <clears throat> thinking that I am so prepared. I got ready early and I even had time to just put a couple little chats in the chat box to a couple comments people were making. I'm sitting here waiting for the show to start. <sighs> And forgot to have the the prop for tonight's co-sponsor. So, gosh, please forgive me. Good heavens. So, <laughs> this is what was happening. I was just being so professional. And I was giving my hook and asking you guys if you felt overwhelmed. And then I'm talking about if we're just meeting. And then I was giving tonight's co-sponsor. And it was like, boom, I forgot to bring up the item from the co-sponsor. So Megan, that's where I was going. So I'm going to have to cut this part out. I cannot believe I did this. So now everybody is saying hello. And Maggie says she's never been here for a live stream before. And she's excited. Maggie, this is not how they usually go. The host does not usually run away in the middle of her opening. But I, whew, I cannot believe it. So I'm going to start over. And then I can trim out that first part where I was looking kind of crazy. All right. Do you feel overwhelmed with trying to get a meal on the table when it's been one of those days, like today, apparently? And well, in this live stream, I'm going to give you 10 tips that prove to be useful for me in getting food on the table relatively quickly. And while we're at it, we can do a little Q&A. However, homemakers, if we're just meeting, I'm Denise Jordan, and I teach traditional homemaking for today's homemaker. If that sounds like something that you want to learn about, then hit that subscribe button and double tap that little bell icon so you don't miss any upcoming content. So, okay, let's jump into it. And let me share with you that tonight's traditional homemaker live Q&A is co-sponsored by coldest water and coldest water has one enemy and that enemy is hot and what their goal is let me get that off of there let's see whoa where is it okay so coldest water has one enemy and that enemy is hot and their goal is to make you have the coldest water 
possible. So this little insulated water bottle certainly does that. It really keeps the water cold. And it comes in several different colors, like my favorite three colors, red, white, and black. And of course, this lovely, lovely pink in honor of Women's History Month and that kind of thing. So I encourage you to visit their website and check out their giveaway. They have some of the best giveaways. And so I put a link in the description box to their giveaways. And also, if you're interested in buying anything, they've been kind enough to give us a 10% off your entire order. So Coldest Water is our co-sponsor. And the other co-sponsor for tonight is Apron Diva, but I'll talk about her a little bit later on in the show. So let me see who's here and see what people are saying. I know one person was asking a couple of questions. So let me just greet people and we'll see what's what and we'll go from there. So we've got Ray Piano on who says, can't wait for this live that um, she's new to meal planning. And I'm thinking it's a she because of the way the name is spelled. But if I'm wrong, just let me know and I will correct that. And um yeah, she's she's a Ray is a she. And then um, I asked a question since I got on early and had the time. I asked Megan if she liked the fact that in the thumbnail for this live stream, instead of being a picture of me going like with my pearls and the whole nine yards, I thought I would show a picture of a mom with a child and they were in the kitchen cooking and uh, to see if you guys like that thumbnail better. So you guys can let me know in the chat box or if you're on the replay, thank you for joining us. You can leave a comment in the replay whether or not you like the thumbnail that I use today rather than a picture of my smiling little face. And uh, Kadiga is watching and cooking today with her daughter. Well, Kadiga, hey, how you doing? I'm glad you're with us. And yes, I had that picture of the mom with her daughter cooking in the thumbnail today. So hopefully you uh, like that one. Hang on one second. Sorry, I just needed to wipe my nose a teeny bit there. Miss Congeniality, you know, I'm always glad to see you. And then this is Megan going green mom. And Buckeye Girls, I believe, is Thelma. She is with us tonight as well. Thank you for jumping in on the kitchen vignette. And uh, Nefertiri is with us as well from Matriarchs Matter. And <laughs> let's see, Flora Swinney is back with us again today as well. And um, Nancy Whelan is saying happy spring. And oh my goodness, am I so happy that spring is actually coming. You know what? March 21st, spring is actually here. So yes, I'm glad it's here. And for the past couple of days, it has been spring-like. So that's good. And let's see. Tammy Thompson is here. She's saying hello to everyone. And uh, someone was here from Tennessee. I just lost it. So uh, Thelma says she likes the pictures of me better. Okay, I get that. I was just trying to... Uh, to see, trying to switch things up and see how they work. Kim is the first time making the live. And Kadiga said she liked it. It was relevant for today. And um, Anne said this is her third week. She loves the chat. Oh my goodness, it's 1155 in Scotland. And then her healthy home is in Tennessee. Somebody else was in Tennessee. My daughter is there too. And then um, Jalika Murphy said she's never... Watch me before, do we just talk? Well, on this one, yeah. My little Morgie would not be happy. And then of course, I've got Lotta Bailey from Louisiana. So thank you guys for joining me tonight. I appreciate it. So I'm gonna go ahead and jump right in because with some of you being in a different time zone, I don't wanna keep you on. And one of the things I don't like to do is just chat when I don't have anything to say. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started. And then if you have a question, and I'm going to give some of the content first, and then I'll come back and pick up the questions. So if you have a question, don't put any in yet. Wait until I um, 
uh, get a little bit closer to wait till I'm in the middle of point number three and then you can drop your questions in and make sure you put four question marks in before your question and four marks after because I'm not sure if my moderator is going to be on tonight. She hasn't been feeling very well, so she may not be on tonight. So I'll try to see if I can uh, um, catch up with things. And then Going Green says she's in Tennessee, but she grew up in Indiana. Oh, and Miss Congeniality thought I had the mother-daughter photo because of Apron Diva. No, I was just trying to be a little bit avant-garde and, you know, it had to do with tonight's topic. So, okay. So for those of you that are new to meal planning and for those of you that have been trying to work it out, one of the things that I learned, oh, uh, when I'm going to share screen and as I share the screen, one of the things that I will share with you guys, you know, sometimes I'm, my tech doesn't always do as it should. And I'm trying to be a little bit more high tech, meaning that have things on the screen so that you can kind of uh, stay on top of things. So I'm going to share the screen and I have to talk myself through it every time because when I don't, it's when I goof something up. So I'm going to share the screen and this tab and this one. So tip number one is going to be plan your meals one or two weeks in advance. And when you're talking about meal prep and meal planning, it is so important for you to do that. So on a quiet afternoon, for me, since I follow the Fly Lady cleaning system, that's a Wednesday. But for you working moms, that might not be something you can do in the middle of the week because you're tired once you get home. Or if you've been really busy with the little ones all day, it may not just work out. So you may need to wait until Saturday or Sunday when you've got a couple of hours quiet time to be able to do that. And then plan your meals for one at least one week, but two weeks in advance if possible. Because that way you already know what it is that you're going to make. And then you don't have to think about it. It takes some of the angst out of what's for dinner. So, and also, if you already know what it is you're going to make, then on that morning before you leave for work or before you start your day with your family, you can take that meat out of the freezer that you know you need to thaw out, have it thawing out or put it either in the sink or in the fridge or whatever, so that it's thawed out by the time you're ready to get to it. So tip number one is plan your meals one or two weeks in advance. So now I'm going to stop sharing this one and going to come back there and then I'm going to share the screen again. And there should be a way that I can share the screen without going through all the steps, but I haven't been able to figure that part out yet. So I'm going to come over here to tip number two, which tip number two is to grocery shop according to your meal plan. So once you've decided what it is you're going to make over the next week or over the next two weeks, then what you're going to do is plan a grocery shopping list based on that meal plan. And if you're able to shop for two weeks, that's really good because then you've got all the goodies that you need in your freezer, your fridge and your pantry, and you can just get things out as you need to. And one thing that I will tell you is that when you shop according to your meal plan, it saves you money because you're buying just what you need and you have less weight. So that's an important thing there. And I've got some printables that you are welcome to. I will uh, put a link in the description box that you can click on and it will take you to uh, some prompts where you can download my printables for your freezer, your fridge, your pantry inventory and it also has a meal planning sheet in there as well as a grocery list so i will put that in there in the description box so you can take a peek at that should you choose to so those will be linked in the description box should you choose to take a look at those and then um tip number three
is that you would take a look at your calendar and choose your meals according to the activities. Now, what does that mean? Well, what that means is this. So let's say you discover that on one of the days when you look at your calendar, the kids have something going on after school or something later on that evening, or you have something that you have to do and you have to go out. So you don't want to choose a meal that's going to take a little bit longer to make. So if you need to have something done a little bit quicker, then you might just want to swap out a couple of the meals that you've already chosen for that week. Because again, you've already got everything in the house that you need for whatever meal you have on the list. And it's nice and easy to be able to just move them around as needed. Okay, so now I'm going to stop sharing this and I'm going to take a look at what's going on in the Q&A and see what's what's going on there. So, oh, there's a Cozy Cakes Cottage that has joined us. Hey, Cozy Cakes, you're new here. Welcome. We're glad you're with us. Ladies, say hi to Cozy Cakes. This is the first time I believe she's joined us here on the Traditional Homemaker Live. And um, let's see. And then um, her healthy home said she's going to be doing some canning. And so Matriarchs Matter, and I forgot what her name is. Matriarchs Matter, you're going to have to remind me of what your name is. I'm thinking Charlotte. I couldn't be wrong. But anyway, you've got canning on your save list. And then there's Judy saying hello to us. And let's see. Ann Allen, this is her third week here, and she is all the way from Scotland. I just love that. I've got friends in Scotland. And uh, let's see, questions. So Megan said she has about 20 aprons and never seemed to wear one. I've got about 15 aprons, and I wear one every day, sometimes a couple times a day. So uh, Matriarchs Matter, tell me what your name is again, because I've forgotten. But you said on extracurricular night is always a freezer meal or a taco chef salad or something like that. And that makes perfect sense. You have to look at your calendar to see if you have to leave the house, then what is it that you need to do for that? So yeah, that makes perfect sense. So Robin wants to know, do I cook the same meals monthly? You know what, Robin? I guess sort of I do. Not always, but like I always try to make some kind of a chicken dinner. I like to make a really nice Sunday dinner. And then if I'm making a nice Sunday dinner, there's typically leftovers from Sunday for something else. And then we'll tend to have fish at least twice a week. Now, personally, I don't eat fish, but my husband does. I'm married to the big fisherman of the Midwest. And I don't like fish. And he went fishing yesterday for the first time this season and brought home a lovely mess of fish. And this morning he got out in the garage, got him everything all cleaned up, filleted and whole nine yards. And he made some for dinner tonight. But I had 15 bean soup because I don't eat fish. But I did promise him that one day next week when he makes the fish dinner, I will share it with him. Just because sometimes I'll make things that he doesn't like and he will eat it. So I thought, you know what, I'll, I'll force myself to eat fish one night, but just one night. But no, we don't necessarily have the same thing all month, but I do repeat things and repeating things is nice. And if you think about it, when you were in school and you had school lunches, they had a rotation that they had for meal planning. So yes, you can certainly repeat those. So if you're able to plan a meal for say a month or two months, Keep it in mind that these are fluid and you don't have to stick to them. Then you can just put things in rotation. Um, now, I'm not sure who. Oh, Erica is new. She's saying hello, everyone. My first live and a new sub to Miss Denise. Erica, welcome. And everyone, uh, welcome, Erica, to our to our little community. This is her first live. I am so glad that she found us and I'm hoping that I can share some interesting tips with you guys tonight. Okay, so I answered Robin's question that I sort of cook the same meals monthly. Um, Erica says I'm rather, um, Megan says I'm pretty awesome. Thank you, Megan. I appreciate that. Now, I'm not sure what this is. I must have missed something. I must have missed a question 
that Megan had about putting something somewhere. Miss that. Nefertiri, that's right. Matrix Matter is Nefertiri. That's her name. I forgot. So uh, Kadiga said she has go-tos when she's not prepared. And so since we're talking about go-tos, that's one of the tips that I've got coming up. So I don't want to do my show and tell for that little tip yet, but it'll be coming up pretty soon. And um, Megan says that she uh, should wear them. She dries her hands on, on them if she loses a towel and needs to get in the habit of grabbing one when she's going to cook or clean. Yes. So I will typically have one hanging on a hook down by the kitchen. That must be what Kadiga was referring to. I will have one hanging on the hook down in the kitchen. Or if I'm getting ready to stand up to the sink and it's not there, I'll just take it out. So... I uh, won't answer that call right now since I'm in the middle of the show, um, but I will send a note so she doesn't call right back. It was one of my sisters, and um, you know how sisters are. It's like if they call you and then you don't answer, so then they'll call the house phone. So I better send her a message that I'm doing my show. We'll see what happens. I just won't answer. I don't want to take the time to do that right now. Okay, so. And then I do dry my hands on them. Sometimes I will tuck a towel into the waistband, but typically I'll put an apron on. And if I forget to have an apron and I'm standing at the sink, the minute I turn the water on, I think, oh, and I'll run upstairs and grab one and bring it down and put it on. Okay, let's see. Do I have a plan for leftovers is Linda's question. Those are always a challenge because she doesn't want to waste them. Yes, I do, Linda. So in regards to leftovers, what I will do, like when I'm making dinner, um, and since it's just a hubby and I here, and I see it's you and your hubby there in your picture, I know that typically whatever I make is going to be for more than one meal. It, like last night, I made 15 bean soup. That's more than enough for one meal. We can have it for two dinners or for dinner and lunch, whatever. And even then, there'll still be some leftovers. So if I already know that it's going to be too much for one meal, I've got some freezer containers that I, well, some, yeah, some freezer containers that I will just go ahead and dish some of that up or pour some of that into my storage containers right away so that I'm only working from half of the content for that meal. So if I know I'm going to go ahead and put it in the freezer, I'll put it into some of my glass freezer containers. And then I've got some Rubbermaid ones that are sort of a plastic that I use for storage containers that I put in the fridge. So if I know, let's say today is Monday and I'm planning to have that leftover 15 bean soup on Wednesday, then I'll put it in a storage container in the refrigerator. But if I know I'm, but like I made it on Wednesday and we had it for leftover today, if there's anything left over after tonight, I'm going to put it in the freezer and have it for next week. And then sometimes on my meal plan, when I know that on Monday I'm making 15 bean soup, because maybe Monday my theme is meatless Monday, then maybe I'll put some in the freezer right away for next Monday or for another day, that kind of, that kind of thing. Uh, and it does help reduce the waste when you do that. You just go right ahead and plan for how you're going to use what's left over. So now if it's you and the hubby, you know you're going to have leftovers. If you've got several children, then you may use up all of that. Or what some people will do will be have a free-for-all night where they put all the leftovers out on the table on a certain night. And then people just kind of share and eat, pick and choose from what they want from there. Um. So Judy says this is her first live. She's new to meal planning and finds that new recipes take longer. Yes, they do. New recipes take longer, which is why if you're a busy working mom and you need to have something on the table quickly, you don't want to be trying something new. Save your new recipes for Sunday or for Saturday or for Friday when you don't have to like get up early on Saturday morning. So save new recipes for those times. But during the week when you got to get something on the table quickly, you want a recipe that is tried and true. Um, you know what, Gail? I don't have any of the links in the description box yet. I, uh, and the reason for that is the way StreamYard is set up, 
my sister is calling again. Let me try to send her a message. I'm sorry, guys, but she'll keep calling. It's not the one that usually helps me, but um, it's another one. And she'll keep calling if I don't answer. I hope nothing's wrong. Because both of them have health issues. So that's why I'm stopping to check that. I should have gave my phone to my husband so he could answer it in case of any kind of emergencies. So anyway, so she said she made, so uh, Judy made tofu meatballs last night and they were delicious, but way too long to make. So I hope, well, hopefully though, Judy, when you made those tofu, tofu meatballs, you made extra and you set aside some in the freezer to have next week. And then you're ahead. And that's what you want to try to do. Um, and then uh, Gail made it here. So now Maggie says she does her meal plan monthly, but she's not feeling creative since COVID-19 struck and she's gotten in a rut. It's extra challenging because she spends time cooking a meal and she doesn't feel like eating it anymore. You know, COVID has been a challenge for all of us and we really had to try and be more creative. And so Maggie, since you do plan a meal, uh, do a meal plan monthly, why don't you maybe try one week or maybe one day each week where you switch it up, where you try something new that week, just to give yourself a little incentive to um, be more creative for yourself and for your family. That could be helpful that way. And that, my throat is getting a little dry, so let me get a little sip. Okay. All right, so now I'm going to go back to um, the content and then I'll come back to answering questions. Um, so hang on a second. So we got down to the first three tips. We did a little bit of live Q&A. So now I'm going to go back to tip number four, which I think is really important. So I am going to share my screen. And tip number four is to have a prep day and prep your meals ahead of time. So for example, when Judy made those tofu meatballs, it would have been good if she could have prepped them ahead of time. But since she didn't, she made them on the one day and they took a long time. Hopefully she made a double batch. So she's got some to use on another day. So have a prep day and then prep your meals ahead. So when I say a prep day, what I'm talking about it's choose the day like a Saturday or a Sunday if that works out best for you. And for you working moms, Saturday or Sunday is probably going to work best. For me, I could use a Tuesday, which is my free day on my fly lady cleaning method. But typically I'll do a Saturday or a Sunday for my prep day as well. And so what I'm doing is I'm looking at the meal plan that I planned for the week. And I'm looking at what can I prepare on Sunday or Saturday, whichever day that I'm prepping for, what can I um, prepare on Sunday or Saturday that can help get me through the week? So I used to have a colleague that, that I worked with about 20 years ago. And on the weekend, her and her daughter would cook all weekend and they would make all of these casseroles and, and then put them in freezer dishes and they would label them and put them in the freezer. And I thought, wow, how interesting that is. But then I learned it was not as unusual as I thought. And so when I gave it a try, I realized it is really very, very helpful because for you working or busy moms, you can just pull something out of the freezer that morning before work or before your day starts, set it in the fridge or in the sink to let it thaw out. And when you come home, pop it in the microwave or pop it in the oven and you've got a hot meal. And most recently, I have found two books that fully embrace that method. One of them is this one and it is called The Batch Lady and it is by Suzanne Mulholland. And she says, shop once, cook, cook once and eat well all week. 
And this book has some wonderful, wonderful recipes in it. And I picked it up at the library. And you can give that a try, picking it up at your local library. But I've decided I'm also going to purchase it because I really like some of the recipes that it has in there. And I like her approach. She will show you how to make 10 dishes that you can pop in your freezer and have them ready to just pull out when you need them. The other one that I've been using quite a bit is this one, and it is called Cook Once, Eat All Week by Cassie Joy Garcia. And this one is 26 weeks of gluten-free affordable meal prep to preserve your time and sanity. Now, I don't need gluten-free. I can eat regular stuff. So I don't do the gluten-free pumps. If it calls for gluten-free pasta, I just use regular pasta. Uh, if it calls for um, like... I don't know, whatever you need for gluten-free, I'll just go ahead and use my regular rice or whatever in the particular dish. And it works out fine. And I will link both these books in the description box. But as someone just pointed out, I don't have any links in there yet. I forgot about that. When I'm setting things up on StreamYard, I can't seem to get the links in until afterwards. But I'll do them immediately after the show. And I'll also put in the link for... Um, the printables immediately after the show. And it'll, it'll, I'll have in there, it'll, it'll say that you can find them there. But these books are amazing and it really, really is helpful. And then what both of them do is they will give you a shopping list for the various things that you need to prepare. So that is really nice as well. Um, so I think you'll want to do that. And then uh, tip number five is going to be uh, one of the questions that someone was asking earlier, which was, do you rotate your meals or do you have a monthly um list or whatever. So tip number five is to keep a list of quick and easy recipes that your family enjoys. So if you do that, if you keep that list of things that your family enjoys, then you can kind of look at that to kind of plan ahead if you need to. Like I've got my planner here. And one of the things that I did, for, uh, I pulled out, like I had this weekly meal plan uh, printable, well not printable, something I had bought to go with like the Happy Planner, but I used it here for this planner and I had written out all the different things I was going to cook for, 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 for that week and then I used another week and then on the back of this thing there is a grocery list and you can pick up little things, you know, like this. Uh, like at Michael's or wherever or something like that, you can create your own. And like I said, I've got some printables that I've got a, a meal plan and grocery list on, which I will put them in the description box once we're done. But that's a way you can do that. Or you could get like a little booklet or binder that you use to um, put your meal plans in as well. This particular notebook says Eat Well Meal Planner came uh, comes from uh, the Inkwell Press Productivity Company. And you guys know I use the Inkwell Press Planner. So I ordered the little meal planner booklet. But what I find is that I'm more likely to write things down in a little three ring binder or on a piece of paper. Like this little binder right here, I got all kind of goodies in it. Like one of the things that I've got in it, like here's the inventory list for my freezer. And, and these are what I'll link in the description box. And then here's an inventory list for my fridge. And then here's an inventory list for my pantry. And then once I've done that, then I'll choose, you know, the meals that I'm going to make for the week. And then over here, I've got, you know, like what I need to shop for. And then I will make an actual shopping list so that I can take that with me to um, the grocery store or when I'm placing my grocery order. So I will tend to do it that way. And then also in my binder, I might put in some recipes that I found that I really like or that I've tried. So I'll put those in the back of the binder or maybe I've got 
uh, some recipe cards that I found somewhere that I like, you know, something like that. But I'll put them like in a little folder like this, you know, in the back of the binder. But so it doesn't have to be pricey or fancy. Uh, just a little something that you can use to keep track of the things that you like. And then I've even got this little notebook in here as well so that I can, you know, just have little notes in here for um, things that I want to remember. So, I mean, it's not high tech or anything like that. You know, it's just a book. A little book with stuff in it and as you guys can tell I'm pretty much old school so this works for me but for you moms who like to be a little bit more high-tech there's things that you can find online digitally that can help you sort things out in that regard as well so there's that so keep a list of quick and easy recipes that your family enjoys and something that you don't have to think real hard about like Hadiga said earlier that she has some go-to meals for when she's in a hurry or if it's extracurricular night or something like that. And then the other thing that you will want to do is to make some meals ahead when you can. So keep some meals ahead in the freezer so you can pull something out when needed. So again, you busy working moms, when you need to get something on the table quickly, then have something that you can pull out of the freezer when needed. That is invaluable. It can be a casserole. It can be a pizza. Um, it can be something, you know, really simple, but you want to be able to pull something out of that freezer when needed. So casseroles, chili, soup, pizza, whatever, you want to be able to pull that out pretty quickly when you need something. And then uh, let me just see if there's a few more questions over here and then I'll come back. So, um. Let's see. Okay, let's see. I'm going to go back up here because I missed some. So, okay, do I plan a night for leftovers? I got that one. And remember, guys, put question marks four in the front and four at the end of your question so I don't miss them because my... Um, Moderator is not on tonight. And then um, we got Judy's question. So Judy said, I'm teaching her the value of homemaking, some things that she didn't learn from her mom. So I'm glad that I'm able to fill in the gap. And really, guys, that's what I want to do. I want to try to fill in the gap for some of you that just maybe have a few things missing. And... Maggie does her meal planning monthly. We got her. So um, Never Terry says she never thought to separate her freezer meals. She uses them just consecutively on two consecutive nights. No, separate those bad boys. If you're gonna you're gonna make a freezer meal, maybe have one this Monday and one next Monday. But you know, one this week and then one the next week, so that you don't have the same thing and you get bored with it. Because you can get a little bit bored with some of the things that you're cooking if you don't mix it up. Uh, so Megan says her meals have gotten simpler. Many are basically dumping stuff in the Instant Pot. Megan, I'm going to tell you something. My Instant Pot is coming up as one of my tips. Um, uh, let's see. So Gail sees the link for the cold water, but the meal planning template is not in there yet. I had to put the cold water links in first because there's a process that I had to follow to do that. The meal planning template, though, um, if you guys, I'm going to drop it in there, but if you guys go to my website, which is... Um, And see, this is the point of not having my moderator tonight. She could drop that in there for me. But 
She's not. So if you guys go to this link, www.thisandthatwithdenise.com, if you go to that link there, and you, um, when you go there, it'll ask for your email information. And then when you fill in the prompts, it takes you to a link that gives you the meal planning bundle. So that's how you can get it there. So, so there you go. So you can access it that way. And I apologize for not having those links in there. Okay, so now let me go back up. So Judy said she did make extra tofu balls. Good. And then you can got some for next week. And then now Kadiga said she was she tried making two whole chickens. She deboned one and is using it for a quick soup today. And that's one of the tips that I was going to talk about is that when you um, especially when I give you my the actual meal for the week. But yes, if you make a chicken, when I talk about making ahead, you know, if you make a chicken today, if you um you can do one or two things. You can either make two and have one for this week, one for next week. Or if your family doesn't use it all, then when you make that chicken, you cut it in half and you use one half for Sunday and the other half for maybe Wednesday. And I'll come uh, to more of that in just a minute. But uh, but yes, so. And Maggie says, uh, Cozy Cakes, Maggie says she does the same thing. She'll make dinner and then don't want it. Well, it's because, you know, sometimes she's getting a little bit tired of whatever it is she's cooking. But uh, she just maybe looks for something else. But yeah, as Kadiga said, make extra when you can. You know, try to make, try to cook once if you can. And then Kadiga says, instead of new recipes, she'll cook favorites in different ways. Yes, you'll want to do that. I got it, Kadiga, that you debone one. So now Megan says she has a checklist app where she puts her tried and true list of stuff in it, and then it can help her move meals up or around and that kind of thing. And then she can order groceries from that. So that's good. And then Maggie going green, her name is Megan. Okay. Having a little hot flash there, ladies. Sorry about that. So Maggie says um, uh, her husband will rave over a meal and she'll just make a bowl of cold cereal for herself. Oh, I am so sorry about that. You know, try eating the meal with your husband, even if you're not all that excited about it. Just like you had a bowl of cold cereal and you can't be excited about the bowl of cold cereal. Go ahead and try to have that meal with your family. And, you know, just give it a try. And then Kadiga says she'll also try looking at good cookbooks. And, uh, oh, Kadiga, don't even talk to me about cookbooks. I have a cookbook addiction as well. I have so many cookbooks that one of the things that I had to do was declutter them. I must have put 40 cookbooks in um, a box for the Goodwill, at least 40. And I've got at least 40 or 45 more downstairs in my cookbook cabinets. I love cookbooks, I had to get rid of some. So Tam is here from Love My Babies Forever. Um, cook once, eat all week is helpful for adjusting your dairy-free, paleo, paleo, keto, et cetera. Yeah, so it really is good for all of that, but I just use it just for the different recipes for you can cook once and can make a variety of different things. One of the things though that I did learn about using it is sometimes like if she's having a ground beef week and there's three ground beef recipes for that week, I may not want three ground beef recipes that week. So either I'll make one and make two and save the other one for another week. So if I'm planning for two weeks, I can move some things around like that. Okay, let's see. Does anyone chop and freeze onions, celery, or carrots? Yes, Judy, you can do that just fine. You can chop and freeze celery, onions, or carrots. Carrots, blah, blah, blah. You can freeze them into small uh, portions that you're going to use for baking, or you can just chop them ahead and put them in the fridge because you'll be using them later on in the week. So, yes, you can certainly do that. And then Kadiga is saying, yes, she does that and they freeze very well. Um, 
she throws a gallon bag of carrots and celery and she always keeps them on hand. That just kind of saves you trouble of having to chop every time. So uh, Designers Loft, and I've forgotten your name. You said it's good to make a list of what they like. You're not that organized. But remember this, just because something has been doesn't mean it has to be. So maybe you've not been organized, but you can get more organized by just starting to make a list. You know, just get yourself a little notebook. Just get yourself a little notebook and it doesn't have to be anything special. And just start with that and just start keeping a list of the things that your family likes. So you can do it that way. And then uh, Megan also dehydrated um, or freeze dry some onions, carrots, and celery. And um, there's some places where you can buy some of that. Okay. And yes, Erica, start freezing those fresh veggies before they go bad. I had to start doing that. So if I get too many carrots or something like that, which typically I get the carrots used up before they go bad, but it could be something like green beans or, um, oh, excuse me, something like that. Maybe the green peppers that I might need to freeze before they go bad. So Maggie put index cards, uh, she cuts them in half and put them in a decorative container on her cookbook shelf and then draws one out when she's short on ideas. That's a good idea. On one side, they have entrees. On the other, we'll have options for side dishes. I like that. Okay. So Megan said, have you ever considered using your inventory list for a shopping list so you don't have to rewrite? No, I don't. Because my inventory list, I've got a lot more things in my inventory than I have on my shopping list. So whereas I may have used a few things from my inventory, there could be some things that I'm going to cook that either may not be in my inventory or that um, I don't need to purchase because I've already got them in my inventory. So the shopping list pretty much is going to be for the things that I need to pick up that I don't have in my inventory um, from that perspective. So there we go there. So and then Kadiga's talking about regrowing celery from scraps. I've tried that. Yeah, that is a cool project. So Janice, you said trying to get a list like that, you so I'm so organized that makes me nervous. You said it's are you do you mean you're too organized? I'm not sure what you mean there. But yeah, just get that started. And you can't be too organized in that regard. So Nancy said she makes a monthly meal plan and shops once a month. I shop once a month as well, Nancy. I'll make a two-week meal plan, and then I will um, fill in the other two weeks from things that I've already got in my inventory, something that's in my fridge and my freezer already or on the pantry. And then Nefertiri says, it sounds like meal planning has a lot to do with identifying your go-to meals. Yes. So you definitely need to figure out what are your go-to meals and then have the things on hand that you need to have for that. And then you can also look at what are some of the other meals you're going to want to make in the meantime. Okay, I'm going to go back to um, my other tips. So let me get those done and then we'll come back to questions. So let me get this off the screen. So I am going to go to tip number seven now. And tip number seven has to do with mixing it up a little bit, trying to have a little fun, like maybe have breakfast for dinner or a picnic supper. So let's say it's been a really busy day. You come home from work. You've got to get something on quick. Then you can say, family, we're going to have breakfast for dinner tonight. And maybe you make a pancake supper. And uh, or we said we're going to have a picnic for dinner. And so you make sandwiches and you spread out a nice little tablecloth or blanket or something on the floor in the living room in front of the TV. And you guys sit around and have sandwiches or something like that. But just something to mix it up a little bit, interject a little bit of excitement, 
You can let them help you kind of get some of the things out, choose some of the things for the picnic supper or for that um, pancake supper, like that breakfast for dinner. One of the things that I used to do for my family is I would have hot dog sausages. And um, what those are is like regular hot dogs, only I would cut the hot dogs down the middle and then I would cut them um, in half and then cut them in half again. So they're real flat, little small little pieces. They probably would end up about this size. And then I would fry them in butter or I should say saute them in butter. And those would be our sausages. They were little hot dog sausages and serve them with pancakes. And then maybe we might have some cinnamon apples or something like that with them. And they loved them. They thought that that was such a fun meal, like a pancake supper and hot dog sausages. And sometimes when we would have company for breakfast and I would make the hot dog sausages, kids thought that was so cool, hot dog sausages. And you can choose all beef hot dogs. You can choose kosher hot dogs, whatever kind of hot dogs you need for your family. You can do that. Or, of course, smoked sausage, regular sausage, bacon, that kind of thing can work well as well. Or corned beef hash from a leftover pot roast. Maybe you made a pot roast on Sunday or on a Thursday and you've got some beef left over. Well, you can make hash with that. Chop up some potatoes and onions and kind of make a hash with that and have that for supper. Or like I said, um, the hot dog sausages with pancakes. And then the other tip that I want to share, a couple of people have already been bringing that up. And that particular one is that I think that everyone should invest in a slow cooker because a slow cooker is invaluable for a busy mom or dad, and they are very inexpensive. You could get a pretty decent slow cooker for between $20 and $25. And, you know, that's not a lot of money. I mean, it's all relative but you can get a pretty good slow cooker for between $20 and $25, and it'll last you for several years. And then you can put something on in the slow cooker or the crock pot before you leave for work and then come home and things are ready. Just take it out and serve it. Now, you might need to do a little bit of prep the night before, but then you get up that morning before work, get the stuff out that you prepped, put it in that crock pot, set it, and head out the door and when you come home you might need to just make some toasted bread or muffins or something like that that you can make quick and easy to go with that but hey it's quick and it's easy and as I said they're pretty inexpensive now it does require a little bit of prep the night before but when you come home it's done and what kind of things can you make in the crock pot well or the slow cooker you can put a pot roast in there you can do pulled pork and have pulled pork sandwiches you can do beans like a 15 bean soup um, you can do chili there's all kind of slow cooker recipes that you can find either online or in various cookbooks and your family will love them and they save you so much time so definitely you want to have a slow cooker. And I know a few people over there are talking about Instant Pots. I see it over there out of the corner of my eye, but I'm trying not to look at it because I want to show you my next tip, which is buy an Instant Pot also. Now, I know most Instant Pots can function as a slow cooker. I know that they will do that, but if you... Instant Pots can be a little pricey, and I love mine, but I also love my slow cooker. And even though my Instant Pot can serve as a slow cooker, I don't use it for that function. My uh, slow cooker is a little bit larger from that perspective than my Instant Pot. I just like the way I can work with this slow cooker, plug it in, that kind of thing, and then go and not worry about the settings that I have to be concerned about with the Instant Pot. But that Instant Pot is certainly a game changer. Yeah, the Instant Pot is definitely a game changer. I made 15 bean soup in my Instant Pot last night. Yesterday was Wednesday and I was really busy most of the day. And then I thought, oh, shoot, the hubby had gone fishing. I thought he'll be home in about an hour, hour and a half. I had planned to make beans for dinner. So I thought, okay, 
I'll put them in the Instant Pot. So I made 15 bean soup in the Instant Pot. It was ready in less than an hour and a half. And when he came in, well, shortly after he came in, I made corn muffins and it was good to go. So I made the corn muffins when there was about 10 minutes left in the cooking time on the Instant Pot. And then, you know, after you finish the cooking time, then there's the time where it just kind of naturally releases the pressure in it. So I started the corn muffins and by the time the pressure had naturally released for about 10 or 12 minutes, the corn muffins were done. Got them out of the oven on the table, got the bean soup out of the Instant Pot and we had dinner. And then I think we had like applesauce as a sweet to go along with that. So definitely Instant Pots are something you definitely want to have. And it was a great meal. And I used chopped up carrots, celery, and onions to put in there. So I didn't have any that I had chopped up ahead and it could use. I had to chop them up fresh that, that night. And I didn't chop extra because I was in a hurry that night. So there's that. So I got a couple people over here that are saying um, that Kadiga says she loves her Instant Pot. And... Uh, I think I just missed a couple questions. Um, let's see. So Lindsay, oh, Lindsay Lou says that um, her husband went low carb, so meal planning is becoming more challenging. And then she has two teenage girls who loves the bread and pasta, so keeping everyone pleased is difficult. He's lost 24 pounds, though. I don't know. Maybe I should go low carb. You know what, though? There could be some low carb pasta that, that you can give the girls. And you can certainly put the bread on the table for the girls that hubby doesn't have to eat so that they can also be satisfied. Because remember, he's on a diet, not them. And um, and he can also eat some of that pasta. It's just the portion sizes he's going to need to be concerned about or get the low carb pasta. So you can consider doing that. Um, Janice said she loves the Instant Pot. Just drop it in and go for it. Uh, Sherry, I'm not sure what you're referring to. I must have missed something there. Uh, but a hustle hard mom said she loves making freezer meals in her instant pot makes her life so much easier with five kids. Yes, it does. Making those freezer meals in the instant pot. And my daughter bought uh, some kind of an extra large pressure cooker. She said it was better than the instant pot. And she said for her, it was a life changer because, you know, she's one of those busy executive women. And by the time she gets home at six o'clock, six thirty, and it's time to get something on the table, it's already late at that time. So she said that saved her life because she could cook three or four meals on a Sunday and put them in the freezer. But important thing, people label them, label them, label them, label them, label them, label them. Or if you've got men and boys that are going there, pull them out and eat Tuesday's dinner for Monday's lunch, especially right now with everybody being home related to COVID or virtual school or working from home. So yeah, keep them labeled. And then Megan says, Lindsay Lou could try something like teriyaki chicken or beef and broccoli and then serve it with rice or pad thai noodles for the girls. And then the darling husband can just eat it plain. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's true. Um, I use um, the uh, Rubbermaid, um, these Rubbermaid um, freezer, like freezer to uh, oven dishes. And I'll link them in the description box below. I've got them in my Amazon store, but I'll have to put all these links in after this session is over. So, but I will, but they're Rubbermaid. They're very nice. I found them on uh, Amazon, but Target also carries them. And um, I bought one at Target and I liked it so much that when everything was shut down, I went on Amazon and I ordered a set. So I really like them. I've got a video where I showed the unboxing when I got them. I'll link that video below as well. I got a lot of links to put in uh, later on tonight. Um, and then Sherry said she loves sheet pan meals. I do too. Yes, sheet pan meals. And for those of you that are new to meal planning, a sheet pan meal is when you take a sheet pan, like a cookie sheet pan, that kind of thing, and you'll have the meat on it. Maybe you've got some root vegetables or something else that you're going to be cooking with it. I haven't had a call all day. Not all day. And now look at my phone. 
Now, I told the hubby I was starting the show, so he at least will get the house phone. But sorry, and the phone is right there by the computer. Sorry. Okay. But a sheet pan meal, you take a cookie sheet, and then you take your roast, your root vegetables, and you put them on the cookie sheet. You take whatever meat you're going to have on there. You can season it all up together. Put aluminum foil over it or not, depending upon what it is you're cooking. Put it in the oven and cook it all together. Sheet pan meals are wonderful. First of all, you only got one pan. It's dirty and it's just nice. And they're easy to serve, like she says, with rice or over noodles. So yeah, those are nice. The Food Nanny cookbooks are great for menu planning. I have not checked out the Food Nanny, but Nancy, I might have, you might have told me about those before. I need to write those down and check them out because some, if it wasn't you, someone mentioned the Food Nanny last week. So there's that. So Megan said she used Crofton for single serve glass in the freezer. The ones that I use are not single serve. They're like multi-serve. I do have some au gratin glass, au gratin dishes that are single serve and some ramekins that are single serve. But I mostly use my multi-serve um, dishes. Hey, Wendy A, good to have you with us. Thank you for joining us. And then Jinx said uh, that she's late as well. You know what, though? You can catch the replay because I think I've given good value all the way through. Except at the very beginning. Okay. And Carol is here. Carol, glad to have you with us as well. So um, Robin says, how do you deal with meat that you bought on sale, put in the freezer, and don't have a plan? Well, this is what you do, Robin. First of all, when you buy the meat, you're going to break it up into whatever serving sizes that you need. And I like I went to Walmart yesterday to pick up some ink for my computer. And while I was there, I just kind of looked around and they had chicken on sale. So I picked up some chicken breasts and some chicken legs because I like to keep those on hand. Chicken breasts to make quick and easy meals like chicken and, you know, black beans or black bean soup. Or if I want to make a, a chicken noodle casserole or chicken noodle soup, you know, I use those things for that. So I'm going to break those up and put them in the individual, when I say individual, into correctly portioned sizes for a meal that I'm going to make. And then I will freeze them with my food saver or my Nesco uh, vacuum sealer. And then uh, I put it on my inventory. So then when I'm doing my meal plan for the next week, I'll look at my inventory and say, oh, I got that chicken breast in the freezer. Well, I'll make something with that. So that's how you handle that. And yes, do make meals out of leftovers. You got a leftover. Now, my one of my sisters was married to a guy that would not eat leftovers. So she had to make something new every day. But if you are able to, let's say, if you're going to roast a chicken and you cut it in half and put the other one in the freezer, then when you pull it out the next week, you're making a new, a whole new meal. It's not leftovers. So they'll eat it that way, hopefully. Carol says she tries to shop once a month too, needs to get more organized with meal planning just for two people. There's just two of us here too, Carol. So yeah, I will meal plan for two weeks, like for 14 days of the two weeks, knowing that some point during the week, my husband's going to want to have fish for dinner. So I'll have leftovers or maybe a Marie Callender chicken pot pie or something like that. And then I'll be pulling things out of the freezer and rotating some meals that I've cooked before or rotating some uh, recipes that I've used before. Hi, Andrea. I am so glad you're with us today. She says she's finally watching live. I'm glad you were able to catch me. I'm glad you're here. I've got several people live tonight for the first time. So everybody say hello to our newbies tonight. We're, we're, you guys are quite welcome. So Carol says tip seven sounds pretty good. And tip seven was to have breakfast for dinner or something special like a, pin, a picnic supper or something like that. Something fun just to jazz it up a little bit. And I'll go over the tips again at the end. Um. Erica says she hopes to get an instant pot soon. So I get that. And then Megan says they love hash. And you know, whenever you were watching Andy of Mayberry, if anybody's ever seen that, Andy of Mayberry, uh, Aunt B was always making hash at some point. Because, you know, you have roast beef on Sunday. You have hash on Wednesday or Thursday. Ah, 
Aha, uh -huh, yes, no ants or mosquitoes when you're having that picnic in the house. And there's Cal, my sister from another mister. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Okay, wait a minute. I'm missing something. Uh, I've missed a couple. There we go. So Erica said they started having Brenner, which is breakfast and dinner every Tuesday for about two or three weeks, and they love it. I like that. Brenner, breakfast and dinner. Okay. So that means you're having a late, a, a late one, like maybe around 11 or 12 or one, which could also be like brunch, which is like brunch, breakfast and lunch. I don't know, but I like Brenner. Uh, Megan struggles with crock pot. It's cleaning them. They're super heavy to maneuver. She traded that for her instant pot. My crock pot or my, uh, I should say slow cooker has an inner liner. It's like an, uh, a little pot that fits down inside the metallic part that has all the elements and all of that. It's got a little crock in it that I can lift out, which isn't as heavy as everything all put together. So I, I like that. Um, and yes, uh, Nancy also says a crock pot liner, which is like, these are like these little plastic bags, kind of like a, a cooking bag that you can line the crock pot with that helps cut down on the crock pot getting so, or the slow cooker, I should say, because actually crock pot is a brand. It's a brand name like Kleenex and Puffs are brand names and Coca-Cola and Pepsi. Crock pot is a brand name, but a slow cooker is not, but a crock pot is a slow cooker. So Cal doesn't have an instant pot because the price is high, but slow cookers are definitely more affordable. She's going to check the Facebook marketplace and she found one instant pot for $50 and wound up with both and a $30 cookbook. Oh my, sounds good. So Erica says she tends to overcook chicken because she gets nervous about it. And you know, I don't tend to over, well, Sometimes I might overcook it, but you're right. I like to make sure it's done. The best way to make sure your chicken is done is to use a thermometer in the center and make sure it's 165 degrees or higher um, to make sure it's done. But Megan said, oh, that's interesting. Advised by your mom's oncologist not to eat anything out of hot plastic. Very interesting. Hmm, I've not heard that. Yes, and I just said that, uh, um, Kadiga, a meat thermometer. That's what you want to do. Tammy, a meat thermometer will help you with that. Meal ideas for first time slow cooker users, chili, bean soup, particularly like a 15 bean soup, uh, pot roast. You can do chicken. There's all kinds of things. Just go online and Google easy slow cooker recipes and you'll get things like pulled pork, barbecued pork, barbecued chicken. You can even do lasagna in a slow cooker. But I tend to do bean soup, chili, um, pulled pork. <clears throat> <coughs> Excuse me. Pulled pork and um, chicken. <coughs> Those are good things in the slow cooker. Uh, Khadija, is that, did I say that wrong? I thought I said Khadija. Okay, Khadija, yes. Okay, so there's Khadija. Uh... Oh, Sherry was asking of the meal plan template. Oh, okay. And I did write that in here. And I'll put it in here again, how to find it. You can find it. You can find the template here. So this is to my website, this and that with Denise.com. And when you go there, when it pops up and it asks for your information, then it sends you a, a link to um, 
the meal planning bundle. And like I said, I will get those links in the description box once we're done with the show. But that's how you get to it at thisandthatwithdenise.com. Okay, so now let me get back to questions. So um, let's see. Oh, so Maggie would like to see a video of some of my favorite tried and true kitchen items. I can do that. That would be a fun video to do my favorite kitchen items. I can do that. Okay, I'll put that on my list. The concern of undercooking chicken is another plus for the Instant Pot. 35 minutes and it falls apart. Tender and you have a, or four cups of broth. Yeah, you don't usually have a problem with undercooked chicken in the Instant Pot. Uh, oh, yeah. Nancy says, watch the replay to write down meal ideas. So many ideas have been mentioned tonight. And... Um, Cal doesn't like leftovers either. I love leftovers. So uh, Khadija says, um, Khadija says pot pies are one of her leftovers, one of her go-to meals with leftover chicken and frozen mixed vegetables. And she uses biscuits instead of a crust. Now I like that idea. Get your filling and everything done, pour it into your dish and then use biscuits, roll them out kind of flat maybe, and then put them on the top of the mixture where they're touching and they would bake up. Oh, that would be a treat, Khadija. I, I like that. Okay. Let's see. Oh, Angel. Oh, well, thank you so much, Angie. I'm glad you're here. Um, Brenner, that was so cute. Brenner, breakfast for dinner. <laughs> Love it. So Judy said she recommends a uh, wholesome yum cookbook for low carbs cookies. Okay, I like cookies, especially low carbs. Sounds even better. Uh, or low carb cooking. Yeah, keeps her recipes to five ingredients. I like that idea. Marinating your meat will help avoid dryness. Yes, that's a good idea too. Thank you. Thank you. And hi, Sherry, again. Oh, okay, Khadija, I got you. I'll get that correct. And then, yes, you can make chili in the crock pot, particularly with some of the, your prepped pantry items before they expire. The pot pie idea sounds wonderful. And then someone's going to make cannellini beans tonight to see if they to see if so they're going to check see if they've got some salsa in the cupboard. OK, so that sounds pretty good there. Let me go ahead and share with you guys. Um, tip number 10, which are some things that you want to have on hand. So let me do that. So let me get that off the screen. And I will show you tip number 10, which is keep a supply of meal starters or staples. So keep a supply of meal starters or staples on hand. And then when you do that, You've always got things that you can use to make a meal. That's the whole purpose of having that kind of stuff. So you've got fresh produce in your fridge. You've got frozen produce or frozen, frozen veggies and meats and things like that in your freezer. You've got some pantry staples. And I'll show you what some of those pantry staples are. But you've got those things in your pantry, um, your freezer or your fridge so that you can make a meal as you need to. So now what are some of the things that you need to have there? Well, first of all, you always want to have a chicken. And I'd say you could have a whole chicken. And if you don't know how to cut up a chicken, it's certainly a learning experience, but you can have a whole chicken for roasting or frying 
or you could have chicken breasts, chicken legs, or chicken thighs. And with your whole chicken, you can like make a chicken for on Sunday, um, roasted on Sunday, and then use the leftovers from the Sunday meal to make chicken and noodles or something like that on Wednesday or another day, or chicken soup or something like that. Chicken breasts are nice to have in your freezer because you can slice those in half and you can make some really quick meals with chicken breasts very easily. And when they're sliced in half, more like chicken cutlets, they can cook very easily, very quickly. But of course, you want to check that temperature with your meat thermometer. Chicken legs and chicken thighs, those are the dark meat, the juicy meat on the chicken that is very tasty when you're making um, soups and casseroles and stews and things like that. The chicken breast, the white meat doesn't have quite as much flavor as your legs and your thighs. So you either want to have both of those in a soup, a stew or a casserole, but definitely the chicken breast you can have for like individual servings for different meals like that. Other things to keep on hand, smoked sausage. If you eat pork, smoked sausage. If you don't eat pork, then you want to have beef sausage, but some kind of sausage, Italian sausage to make with um, pasta, different things like that, or brat, something that you can use with buns, that kind of thing. Also ground beef and ground turkey, either or cans of tuna, chicken broth and beef broth, because you can use the chicken broth to season your pasta when you cook it, to cook your rice in, to give it some really nice flavor, that kind of thing. Also, you want to have a variety of cheeses on hand, American cheese slices. So on some days when you're having that picnic supper or just really quick, maybe you're doing grilled cheese sandwiches and tomato soup for dinner because that's the way it is tonight. Then you need to have those American cheese slices. And then, of course, shredded cheddar and Mexican cheese so that you can have those for tacos and pastas and different things like that, mac and cheese and whatever. You also want to have pasta in the form of egg noodles. And you want to have some of the regular size egg noodles and then wider egg noodles for casseroles and things like that, as well as spaghetti, macaroni, and those kinds of things. And then, of course, you want to have pasta sauce, taco sauce, taco seasoning, gravies and things like that. So you definitely want to make sure you have a variety of things in your fridge, your freezer and your pantry so you can make a meal. I have to tell you guys, I was talking to one of my um, nieces. She's actually the girlfriend of one of my nephews and they live together and we were just getting ready to have the shutdown right when COVID started. And so I gave her a call to find out what kind of food and things like that they had in the house. And I was sharing with her some things she needed to pick up. And I said, do you have any flour? No. Do you have any baking powder or baking soda? No. Well, apparently many of the younger women, the millennials right now, don't bake, don't cook with those kinds of things. So I said, you need to get some of those things in. Well, why? Well, you don't have any bread, you can make some. You don't have any pancakes, you can make your own pancake batter, that kind of thing. So those are some of the things that you'll want to keep on hand. And there are some other things that you will want to have as well. They include things such as carrots, onions, celery, and garlic. These are things that you can use to make a meal. Potatoes and sweet potatoes. So if you got some ground beef, ground uh, turkey, you got a chicken, you got some pork chops, you got a roast beef with those carrots, onions, celery, garlic, you can and potatoes, you can make a meal. And then keep fresh produce like apples, oranges, and then of course some canned peaches and other canned fruits and applesauce on hand because those can serve as a sweet to kind of, you know, complement your meal. And then of course you want to make sure you've got rice, white rice, brown rice, and some of that 90 second rice. You know, we like that Uncle Ben's rice, which um, but there's Kroger has their own brand, but it comes in a little pouch. You put you twist it open a little bit, pop it in the microwave for 90 seconds, comes out and you've got rice that is good to go. It is nice and fluffy and it is quick. So if you need to get a meal on the table quickly, 
that rice will work. If you've got time on your prep day, then, you know, you can make rice ahead and you can have rice in the fridge to use later in the week. And then, of course, beans. Make sure you've got dry beans as well as canned beans in your pantry so that you can use them to make a meal. And then, of course, eggs. Because you can always have a pancake supper or you can, like I said, you can have breakfast for dinner and have eggs and bacon and toast and that kind of thing. So those are a few of the things that I think you ought to have. And then there are a few other things, too, that I think would really be good to just make sure you've got on your list. And they include bread canned milk because you can use your canned milk to make all kinds of things. You're going to have flour. I told you the, the story about my niece that didn't have any flour. And what my husband calls those cooking soups, cream of chicken soup, cream of mushroom, cream of celery, those soups that you need to kind of make a, a, a dish a little bit more hearty or to flavor it up a little bit like that. Of course, you can look at the sodium content in any of the canned items that you pick. But again, we're talking about your ability to be able to make a meal quickly. So if you have to use a can of this cooking soup, you can choose those that are low in sodium. Or if you only use them occasionally, it's not going to make that big of a difference. And then, of course, always keep some Jiffy Corn Muffin mix on hand. Now, of course, you can whip up your own cornbread muffins with no problem at all. But I'm just trying to give you some quick tips for you busy moms, you busy homemakers, whether you're a mom or not, you're a busy homemaker and you need to get that meal on the table quickly. Then those Jiffy Corn Muffins can really help extend a soup, a stew or a chili and and they're quick and easy to do. And then I also like to keep some stovetop dressing on hand. So let's say on Sunday I'm roasting the chicken and I want to have some chicken and dressing with cranberry sauce. Stovetop dressing is pretty good. They've got a cornbread uh, version as well as a regular white bread version. And then, of course, taco shells for Taco Tuesday. So those are things that I definitely think you need to have on hand. So these are things that you want to use so that you can make a meal. So when I say make a meal, as I was talking to my niece, she didn't have some of the basic things like carrots and potatoes and those kind of things. I said, well, how are you going to make a meal? And at this point in time, they um, had her her guys, two little sons over uh, frequently. And she says, well, they really don't like that kind of food. I said, what do you mean they don't like that kind of food? You know, so many of the kids just want like chicken nuggets or french fries. I'm like, no, they eat what you prepare and you teach them to eat these kinds of foods. And I will say, I've talked to several moms and they say, well, my kids are picky eaters. I don't get that. My kids ate what I put on the table. I feel like it, this is not a short order kitchen. If I cook it and I put it on the table, I expect you to eat it. Now, there were things that I knew they did not like, like none of the kids like peas. So I said, OK, you guys don't like peas. I won't cook peas. So I never made peas because the kids didn't like it. They didn't like potato salad. I love potato salad. Only time I get it is when I would get my sister makes it for a special occasion because I wasn't making potato salad just for me. But everything else I cooked, I expected them to eat. I said, you don't like peas. I don't make peas. But everything else you have to eat now. Some kids don't like some vegetables because it can be a texture thing, especially when they're little and they're just being introduced to new foods. Typically, it's a new, a new flavor, a new texture, something like that. Well, just like when you start feeding a baby and you're feeding them with a spoon and they have that tongue thrust and they kind of keep sticking their tongue out and the food keeps coming out and you have to keep putting it back in because they have that tongue thrust and they haven't learned yet how to swallow foods properly. Well, you have to teach toddlers and infants, uh, toddlers and uh, children how to adjust to new foods as well. 
You know, when they're little, give them little carrots to munch on. You can start out with carrots raw or maybe kind of semi-cooked so they're still a little firm, but they're not all the way cooked and they can kind of munch on them. So they learn to adjust to new flavors and new textures. And you know what? Well, I don't like that. Well, how do you know you don't like it? You haven't tried it. Well, I just I just can tell I don't like it. So no, well, you've got to try it. You got to have five bites before you say you don't like it. And you have to have five bites before you can, you know, not eat any more. And then you offer it another time. And they say, well, I don't like that. Well, you know, you got to have five bites. And so they, by the time they've had five bites enough times, they've acclimated to the texture or the flavor and they will learn to enjoy it. But you have to teach them to accept new foods. So there's that. Um, and I, I see over here where Michelle is saying, I don't get that either, Denise. She says, my husband and son ate whatever I made. And yeah, I think... Um, so many of today's children have fast food so much that they're not used to the flavor of real food, you know, potatoes that are cooked at home or um, vegetables that are fresh and then cooked like like you cook at home. So it, it can be an acquired taste, but you have to teach them. And then Carol was saying, most schools don't have home ec or shop classes anymore. So kids seem a bit helpless. Well, and that's why I started this channel, because I want to fill in the gaps for those, those young people who no longer have access to home ec, because we had that to learn the various things as a kid. So again, you introduce your kids to different things. And here's the other thing. The kids will eat what you eat. My youngest child was a lot more avant-garde in regards to the foods that he ate than my older kids because I was eating a bigger variety. So if there's things that you don't like. So then like I didn't like beets, so I didn't cook beets at home. But uh, my son came, my youngest son, though, had beets when he went to visit a friend. He had a friend that was from Russia and they ate beets in his house. And so my daughter, I think she had her first bagel. She had spent the night with some friends and they had bagel. And I'm like, what's a bagel? Now it just shows you how long ago it was. Now I buy bagels all the time. But you know, you eat what you're accustomed to. And today's younger families are used to McDonald's and Burger King and KFC and foods like that. So they're not used to traditional meals. I'll just put it that way. So we have to introduce that to them. All right, let's get that off. So Megan says she, hers has to try two bites. If they don't like it after that, they could either the stuff or make a PBJ. Okay, but so two bites and make a PBJ. Okay. All right. But again, offer it to them again, you know, again, you know, two or three bites so that they can get accustomed to the taste of it. And that's another thing. Uh, Shelly says that her adult children eat a variety of things because they ate together as a family and they were expected to at least try everything. And she didn't take special orders. Yeah. Like I said, I don't run a short order kitchen. If I cook it and put it on the table, I expect you to eat it. And when my grandkids come to visit, they know that. Now, I don't if there's things that I know specifically that they don't like, then, you know, then I'll try not to fix that. But if I cook it, I expect you to eat it. And we do eat as a family. We always did when the kids were little growing up. We would sit down to table. We had dinner every day between like 5.30 and 6. And we sat there as a family and we ate it. And even today, it's just me and the hubby. We tend to eat together. Every now and then he'll want to eat in the other room in front of the TV. But most of the time, we, we will eat together. Okay. Let's get that off. Nepeteria must have said something funny. I don't swear is she. I just saw that. Nepeteri says she runs a yes, yes home. I'm a considerate cook, however. Yes, you can eat what I cook or yes, you can go to bed hungry. Oh, that is too funny. I like that. But yeah, you know, you teach them to eat a variety of different things. So, so there's that. Uh, I don't know about dirt pudding. That's not something I'm not familiar with. Judy's talking about some other low carb cooking. The TJ's shelf stable packs of heavy cream, some cheese and frozen broccoli will make a great broccoli cheese soup. Okay. Uh,
Oh, would I be willing to make a video um, regarding practices to be aware of? Health and safety aspect of homemaking is often overlooked. I have to think on that. I have to, that that's going to be a hard one. I have to really think about what to put in it. But I like the idea. Uh, Shelly said they could politely decline one thing but had to eat everything else. I, I, I like that idea, too. Okay, well, I don't like, well, thank you, but no thanks, but you, you have to eat everything else. Yes. Uh, Megan says it takes 10 times to adjust taste buds. She typically, typically tried cooking them different ways, whatever the disliked food was, if they didn't like it the first time. So, yeah. Okay. So, good. All right. So, now let me share with you guys the actual meal plan, a sample week of meal planning that I put together. I'll show you guys that. Typically, when I'm getting that little note, um, Mickey Blue Skies is sending me um, a question that someone has asked that I've missed. And um, I don't see it yet. So I haven't done that. So I think I've gotten them all. Oh, <laughs> so Judy says she will never eat peas, liver or tongue. Oh, I don't mind peas. Liver, I used to eat liver. I, you know, we had to eat it at home because we had to eat what our folks cooked. When mom cooked, we ate it. And she made us eat liver. But now when I was an adult, I made liver occasionally. But I don't make it anymore. I don't eat organ meats because I've got um, heart. I have a history of heart disease, which is managed by drugs. And uh, so organ meats are high in cholesterol. So I don't eat organ meats anymore at all. And tongue, I never liked. My mom used to cook that. Oh, I just thought it was disgusting. Speaking of disgusting, this is really funny. So my little niece is four. She was over on Sunday with her family and uh, she just loves to be out in the garden with me. And I don't have anything really outgrown in the garden yet because it's kind of cold here still. But I do have some shives and a few things that are kind of poking their little heads up from last year. So I took her out, you know, to let her see. And we looked at the shives and I broke one off and I let her smell it. And she said, oh, it smells like onion. I said, well, it does. I said, taste it. So she bit it. And she's like, oh, it does taste like onion. So um, I broke another one off because she wanted to eat some more. I said, well, let's go in and wash this one first. We'll rinse it off and then you can eat it. And I had some rosemary grown on the counter in the kitchen. And so I let her taste that. And she not just said, here, you can taste this one. <clears throat> so I'm thinking she's going to just like take a little bite and nibble it. She throws the whole thing in her mouth and just chews it right up and swallows it. <clears throat> my throat is getting dry. I've drunk all my water. I didn't put much in it. <clears throat> she said, that's disgusting. Now, she liked the little oniony shies, but she hated the rosemary. So then later on, she was over talking to her mom, and she had her, she was all up in her mom's face like this. Her mom was like, you smell like onions. <laughs> it was so funny. But she's going to come over when I plant my garden. So Khadija loves peas and she likes adding them to rice. There's not a veggie she didn't like. And she says they didn't have choices as a child. Yeah, we didn't either. And Wendy says her fiance was not taught to eat a proper home cooked meal. He would rather eat fast food than homemade. So she's often cooking for herself and doesn't and feels like she doesn't know how to cook. When do you just start practicing little things? So if he likes fast food, so start out making making your own hamburgers at home and maybe making fried potatoes at home and then maybe doing boiled potatoes or baked potatoes and different things like that. Because it's going to take him time to adjust to the different texture. Uh, my friend Mary at Mary's Nest, she calls it processed foods and traditional foods. If he's coming from a processed food background, it's going to be a slow transition to traditional foods. So you and him have to have a talk. And uh, the two of you need to agree as to how much, you know, he expects you to do and you expect from him. But see if you can get him to agree to at least eat. You know, maybe three meals out of seven, he begins to eat that traditional foods that you're making for him and for yourself. Because when you guys eventually get married and have children, you don't want your kids just eating processed foods all the time because it's not healthy. So you have to have that conversation now and say, I need you to help me 
make this transition and see if you can get him to commit to beginning to eat at least three meals of the kind of things that you cook. Because like uh, I think it was Megan that said earlier, you know, he's got to learn to change his taste buds. So and it's going to take some time to adjust or to shift that those feelings. OK, so there's that. Some other chicken liver. No, thank you. My mom likes it, though. I don't grow Brussels sprouts or broccoli. I grow um, the herbs. So I do basil and I'll do like green peppers and uh, chives and thyme and collard greens and things like that. I tell you guys, I have many phone calls all day and then um, I get all these calls tonight. So. Um, I'll just send this person a note on a call. We'll call when I'm done. And then I'll call her later. Like I said, no calls all day. Then I'll, my phone goes crazy. And I'll, I'll do collard greens and things like that. And um, see if I don't answer, then the people call right back. Uh, Brussels sprouts and broccoli, though, I've not been able to do. Um, but yeah, I, I can start getting my uh, garden raked up and I can get my collards and those things planted. So I can get that started now. So yes, Shelly, it is time to start getting some of those things out. Uh, fast food does take some time to, you know, to, to adjust from that. And then Khadija is sharing, find out what your growing zone is and then find out the planting dates. Like for here, we'll get a frost until Mother's Day. So we tend, to, tend not to put out things that can be killed off by a frost. But there are some hardier things like the collards and those kind of things that you might be able to start in a little bit. So, OK, so let me show you the meal plan that I actually put together so you can kind of see that. So. Let me get that off the screen. And then I'm going to share that. Um, oh, wrong one. I got to find the right one. Uh, where is the meal plan? Let's see. I know I had it somewhere. Those are starter examples. Okay, well, maybe I don't have it up here. So I'll just have to share with you guys from my notes. So what I, um, for example, one of the things I thought for this meal plan is that I thought for Sunday, I would make roast chicken with stovetop dressing, mashed potatoes and gravy, green beans, cranberry sauce, and maybe have an apple pie for dessert. And I would buy the pie, you know, because I'm trying to save time. So I'll purchase pie, purchase cranberry sauce. And then the stovetop dressing is quick and easy. So you can make that pretty quickly. But roast chicken, you know, it's pretty good to do. And then you can plan to have the leftover chicken on Wednesday. Now, if you know, let's say for Khadija's family, she's got two little ones and a hubby. They might need the whole chicken or... um Someone's family, like my daughter's family with two teenagers, they're going to use the whole chicken on Sunday. There's not going to be any leftovers or not much. So then I would cook two chickens on Sunday. I would go ahead and roast two of them. You're planning on one for Sunday and one to use on Wednesday. And then um, on Monday, um, the other thing which I forgot to mention is you could kind of have like a theme with some of your meals. So like on Sunday, that's the day that I'm going to cook what we call a Sunday dinner. And a Sunday dinner is something like, you know, um, 
pork chops with, you know, potatoes and gravy, um, some kind of vegetable, but something that kind of takes a little bit of time to cook. And maybe I might make some collard greens or something like that, but something that's going to take a little bit of time because typically you have a little bit longer time on Sunday. And then uh, on Monday, then the theme could be meatless Monday. So if I'm going to have a meatless meal, Monday's the day it's going to be. So maybe um, you can either call it meatless Monday or mac and cheese Monday, because typically on a meatless meal, I'm going to serve macaroni and cheese. And I might even have mac and cheese with that chicken on Sunday and made extra to have on Monday for meatless Monday. Um. And then for that meatless Monday day where you're having the mac and cheese or maybe you might have a bean soup or some kind of bean casserole or something like that, then maybe you might serve it with sliced tomatoes or some other vegetable or of your choice. Maybe you might serve it with a salad um, or uh, roasted tomatoes and mushrooms or roasted broccoli. You decide. You just decide what kind of veggie do you want to have with that um with that meatless meal. So someone over here says it sounds like a holiday meal, which typically it could be like you might do a turkey and dressing on a holiday. But also Sunday, those one of those, you know, meals where you do have, you know, something big. And if you think about it way, way back in the day, people didn't have meat for every meal, not like we do now. So when they used to have a campaign's uh, slogan, like a chicken in every pot, everybody didn't have a chicken. So people didn't always have meat for every meal. Like we tend to have meat for breakfast and dinner or maybe lunch and dinner, that kind of thing. But people tend to only have meat a couple of times a week. So they ate vegetables or, or some kind of a other protein source. So you make that big meal on Sunday, meatless meal on Monday, which could be mac and cheese or um, and serve it with a salad, roasted vegetables, something like that. You decide and some kind of a fruit as a sweet. Tuesday in our house is Taco Tuesday. And my husband's like, when did Taco Tuesday become a holiday? Well, it's not. But on Taco Tuesday, I expect tacos. And actually, it kind of started about six years ago when we were going for some therapy. And um, every Tuesday after we would leave the session, it was time for dinner. So we would go to Qdoba and we would get tacos. And it was Taco Tuesday. And you got tacos for like, you know, um, discount. So... I still expect to go for two tacos on Tuesday. Well, it doesn't have to be tacos, but it could be some other kind of a Mexican themed dish. So maybe instead of tacos, you would make an enchilada casserole or something like that. But in your meal planning worksheet, you would have planned for that Mexican dish, the tacos or the enchiladas, and you would have purchased the things that you needed in your grocery list so that you can make that. Vegetable lasagna. Yes, that could be another thing that you have on that meatless Monday, a vegetable lasagna or something like that. And then on your Taco Tuesday or your enchilada casserole. But if you're doing Taco Tuesdays, you could have um, that made from ground beef or ground turkey or just black beans and rice and cheese and those kinds of things and no meat in it at all if you need it to be uh, vegetarian. And include shredded lettuce, chopped tomatoes, shredded cheese, chopped green onions, sour cream, guacamole. Have all those things set out. Rice, black beans, or corn on the side. I love to have like corn with my Mexican dishes because corn and the lime just really goes well with the black beans and whatever you're putting in that taco shell. Or you could have all those same toppings out and do a baked potato bar and put all those toppings on top of baked potato instead of the taco shell. So it could be like that. So that's what Tuesday could be. And then on Wednesday, uh, we're having the chicken that was left over from Sunday. So maybe I'm going to make chicken noodle soup or chicken and noodle casserole or some kind of chicken stew. You get the drift, but you make some kind of a chicken dish with what the chicken left over from Wednesday and have some kind of a green veggie or salad or something like that on the side with some kind of fruit or sliced apples or canned peaches as your sweet. So now let me just see here. Um, uh, I got a couple good things. Vegetable lasagna, that was a good one. 
And then um, Khadija said her mom's makes a really good seafood lasagna. So, yeah, I hadn't thought of that. That's pretty good. And then um, Megan said she notices that meat isn't lacking if you start cutting down the quantity like in pot pie or chicken and dumplings. And yeah, that's true. Just kind of start cutting back on how much meat you have in the dish. So yeah, there's that. You could do that. Um, seafood lasagna with the white sauce. That does sound interesting. Uh, okay, so Thursday could be pot roast with root vegetables like carrots, potatoes, and onions. So this is where your slow cooker comes in handy for you busy moms. You know, you put, you do your prep the night before, you get the meat seasoned up and maybe put some marinade on it or whatever, get your vegetables prepped. And then that morning before you go to work on a Thursday morning, you put everything in your slow cooker, turn it on, leave to go to work and you come back and it's ready or you set it to go first thing in the morning before you start your day if you're a stay-at-home mom. And then you can maybe have some canned biscuits to serve with it. Now, if you're a stay-at-home mom, maybe you've got time to make those biscuits. But if not, some canned biscuits that you can just pop them open, put them in the oven will work well with that. <clears throat> and then canned fruit or sliced apple for a sweet. And then Friday is family fun night, your family movie night. So keep it simple. You can do fish sticks, fish sandwiches, that kind of thing if you need to have fish on Friday. Or you could do like maybe you have a pizza that you've got in the freezer or um, maybe you make spaghetti and meatballs or you make spaghetti with meat sauce with some ground turkey or ground beef. And remember, you had tacos one day with ground turkey or ground beef. So maybe you made enough ground beef for both of those recipes and you put the ground beef that you did have for the second dish in a storage container in the fridge. You just need to get it out to make that dish fresh. So it's not leftover. It's a whole fresh meal. And then you're making that um, spaghetti <coughs> and meat sauce with a purchased pasta sauce. <coughs> Excuse me. A salad. And maybe you've got some toasted bread or you make some garlic cheese bread with your own toast and cheese and garlic, um, salt, that kind of thing. And then maybe you have ice cream for dessert or um, get out the popcorn to have ready for movie night. And then on Saturday, if you didn't have fish on Friday, you could maybe fry some fish on Saturday because you've got a little bit more time or you could bake it or you could do fish cakes or you can make chili or something like that. So just kind of swap it out. And the one thing that I did mention earlier was that you might want to consider having a prep day. And that prep day is Saturday or Sunday, probably. But you choose the day that works best for you. And you just spend that day prepping those meals. So, you know, you're cooking the chicken for the two chicken meals that week and you get them made and you put them in storage containers in the fridge. And I'll link some of those in the description box. Um, maybe um if you're cooking ground beef that week for, for your tacos and for the spaghetti, you cook all the ground beef at once, put them in different storage containers, half for the tacos, half for the ground beef. And then when you get them out that day, you're making a whole fresh new meal. When you cook that chicken, um, like I said, buy the chicken breast and you in a large family size and then you repackage it for the portions that is needed or you cook a bunch of it. So you've got it for two different meals that is cooked ahead. Um, and if you're chopping onions, celery, or carrots on Sunday or Monday, chop enough for the other meals. If you know you're going to have two other meals, but you're going to be using carrots and celery, chop enough for all three meals. And then you just proportion them. If you got three meals, you're going to need carrots, onions, celery, chop. Then you chop enough for all three and put them in three separate containers and you label them, people. Label, label, label. Or you'll come home and find that hubby ate. Wednesday's dinner on Tuesday for lunch. So there's that. So let me ask you, which of these tips do you plan to implement right away? Which of these tips do you plan to implement right away, like next week, so you can get a meal on the table quickly? Tell me in the comment section if you're on the replay, but tell me in the chat box if you're on tonight. So which tip do you plan to implement right now? And shine bright to glow. Charlotte is here. Hi, Charlotte. Good to have you with us as well. And uh, oh, I think uh, Khadija here was sharing that for that uh, seafood uh, lasagna, they use crab, shrimp, clams, and lobster in that. 
Rachel, please hit the replay. We've had a lot of good discussion tonight. Uh, Khadija likes to freeze rolls and she makes a big batch ahead of time. That's great. Oh, uh, let's see. Okay, we had a lot of good discussion here. So this was what you want to use for the uh, seafood lasagna. Someone asked, and I like wants to know what's in the seafood lasagna. And Khadija says, here's where she wants to know what's in it. And Khadija says, um, crab, shrimp, clams, and lobster. And um, so Lovely is thinking of prepping on the weekend, something she needs to implement right away, hopefully Saturday. Okay, who else can try some of this? So Megan sort of shopped her pantry at the beginning and she has a few meals planned to prep for next week. Good, gonna try to reduce shopping to every other week. I think you save a little bit when you do it that way. So, okay. So that's good. So let me just ask you guys to be sure to visit the links to the coldest water. And I do have those in the description box. They're our co-sponsor for tonight. So be sure to visit their links. And they run some very nice giveaways uh, every week. So you want to be sure to be in on that. And um, they're going to be one of our co-sponsors for the uh, traditional live uh, Q&A for the next few weeks. So you'll see this little bottle again and i'll make sure to put more water in it next time so i just put a little bit in it when i ran it upstairs real quick but i'll make sure to put more in it because you saw i did get kind of thirsty and i couldn't have used more and then also if you want to be the first to know when the apron diva launches check out the www.aprondiva.com as you know apron diva is the um apron shop that I am starting myself. So um, www.aprondiva.com, that's our co-sponsor. And you know, people ask me so many questions about my apron. So I thought, you know what? I'm just going to open a shop and start selling aprons. And Apron Diva is going to launch on April 11th. So if you want to be one of the first to know about that, click on that link and uh, sign up to be on the email list so that you hear about that. And um, let's see, Cool Desert 30 says this is her first live and she will definitely utilize her leftovers from other meals. Great. That's a, I'm glad you're going to do that. And uh, so Megan said she misses once a month shopping, but can't use many canned goods. If you can't, you can't. If you've got to go every week, then you just have to go every week or every couple of weeks. I get it. So, okay, Carol's going to sign off tonight. And you know what, ladies and gents, I need to do the same thing too. So I am so glad that you guys joined me tonight. And uh, Khadija is uh, thanking me for the launch, or rather excited for the launch. And she's saying that I look great in my aprons. I have a lot of fun wearing them. I really do. I really do. And then um, Rhonda's going to start meal planning. And baking chickens and planting for meals when using the leftovers. Very good. And also planning to prep some of the seasonings as well. So I am glad that you're going to do that. So, all right, ladies and gents, it has been a great discussion. I didn't plan on being on this long, but we had a lot of good discussion. Some lot of good ideas. You guys are going to try some tips and I like it. So I will see you guys next week. Same time, same station. So I'll see you next week at 745 on Thursday. And uh, we'll have another interesting discussion. See you next week. Good night. Thank you guys so much for jumping in.